This is a common sight for many Chinese people these days, a cordoned off area. It's a symbol of the Chinese Communist Party or CCP's COVID-0 policy, so strict, ruthless and reckless. The father was helpless in the face of the suddenly erected cordon, left looking at his son who was separated from him, while several police officers on guard refused to let the father pick up his child. That's the father on one side, and this is the son on the other side. Here is a young mother who had gone out for groceries and came back to find her neighborhood on lockdown. Her child was sleeping at home, but the mother wasn't allowed to cross the cordon to get home. I live right across the street. There's no way you can go in there. I went out to shop. My child is at home. What should I do? There is no way. Call the general manager, have him send someone to tell people inside. Find someone to take care of your child, or you're in trouble. Since 2020, the CCP has been insisting on a COVID-0 policy in managing the pandemic, but it has never been able to completely eliminate it. In March 2022, a fifth wave of the outbreak began in China. Its severity is second only to the first wave in Wuhan when the city was completely shut down in 2020. The entire province of Jilin in northeast China is overrun by the outbreak. The city of Shenzhen in the south has been locked down, and the metropolis, Shanghai, is under covert blockade. Meanwhile, Hebei province in northern China, the capital city of Beijing, and Fujian province in the south have also seen large-scale resurgences of the outbreak. Outside of mainland China, Hong Kong is currently in the midst of a serious outbreak. China's National Health Commission reported 4,331 new confirmed cases in 31 provinces on March 20th. Among them, Jinlin province recorded its first two coronavirus deaths in more than a year. It should be repeated here that the Chinese government's data is generally questioned as being grossly underestimated. The CCP's COVID-0 system functions like a button that when pushed, all normal operations are immediately suspended throughout an area. These are all electric wires to stop the residents from climbing out. Building number 85 to 91 are all sealed off with electric wire. Most residents are confined to their homes, while some who are at work aren't allowed to go home but are isolated in their workplace. In some cities, the government uses guard towers at night to search for people who have escaped from the cordon. As the outbreak sweeps through mainland China, Xinhua, the Communist Party's news agency, issued immediate instructions to take the most through preventative and control measures, strive to achieve zero COVID on the social front in the shortest possible time, and write a new chapter of people first, life first. The so-called taking the most through prevention and control measures means to shut down the city, roads, neighborhoods, and other facilities while the so-called with the shortest time means no advance notice. With just one announcement, a lockdown can be imposed on anywhere. If one happens to be in a public toilet at the time of the lockdown, and it happens to be within the lockdown area, then one will spend the lockdown period in the public toilet. During the lockdown, the party has tried to spread a jolly atmosphere. For example, drones flew over the neighborhoods and played cheerful, upbeat songs. Here, white guardsmen dance in the streets to try to boost the public mood.
However, these measures haven't alleviated people's frustrations of being cooped up in their homes. Multiple online videos show many residents of the lockdown area shouting, Lift the lockdown! In this small neighborhood of Shenzhen, the residents have run out of food because of the prolonged closure. In their plight, the residents have gathered together to protest. People in the building are revolting. This protest finally rattled the authorities, and in the evening, the residents were given instant noodles. The Minghong district of Shanghai, which is the hardest hit area of the outbreak, was sealed off for about two weeks. On March 19th, one neighborhood in the district was finally temporarily unblocked for four hours from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Residents were allowed out to buy food. People flocked to the supermarket and cleared the shelves as no one knew when they would be allowed out next. Look, by the time I got to the supermarket, it was all gone. It's the fifth day that the residents of our district have been locked in their homes. On the second day of the night, more than 300 people were taken away to be isolated. Currently, six buildings in the area are locked up. Everyone is panicked. Now it costs 10 yuan for 500 grams of potatoes. Prices are soaring. The economy is bad. And it's hard to get to work. Now it's even worse. Here, even if we buy groceries online, we can't get them because we aren't allowed to go downstairs. My good friend has been eating boiled eggs for four days. We're really hungry. She doesn't have a stove. She works in a shopping mall. In her shared apartment, there's only a kettle. I want to bring her some food, but I can't get out. The man who came to do the test asked me whether there was a community leader taking care of me. I almost cried. Who cares about us? We're just left here to fend for ourselves. In one of the outbreak hotspots, Jinlin province, food shortages are severe as well. How can the people live? How can people live? They don't have any vegetables in their home. You, calm down a bit. How do you let us live with no groceries at home? You have to cooperate with the government. Put on your mask. To cooperate with you? Do I have contagious diseases? Put the mask on. In order to maximize the effectiveness of the lockdown, the government encourages people to report each other for escaping. This man is climbing the wall, and he's looking at me, and he's running away, ashamed. What are you going out for? Shopping. Shopping? The government said no shopping. You're being irresponsible to us. There is another. Do not let her in. She's out. Where does she live? Which unit? Tell me. I will send to the community group right away. Which unit? You tell me.
You take off the mask. You can't do this. Take the mask off. There is surveillance. Or I'll report you. You take the mask off. Or I'll report you to the police. I haven't even gone out. It's the same. Show your ID card. Building 80, Unit 501. I'll upload the information. If you're fake, the government can still find you. The staff, in protective clothing, seem to have suddenly gained police powers. They can easily arrest people who slip out of the lockdown area. This is the man who was arrested. His pants slip off, but he isn't allowed to put them back on. People who are slightly infected and sent to quarantine areas are worse off. In many cities, quarantine sites are temporarily requisitioned hospitals, gymnasiums, schools, and other facilities. People sleep in one large space without any partitions. When supplies are brought in, crowds of people scramble for them. What else is happening in China? Here, people are supposed to be quarantined, including the elderly and children. They are left on the streets for 30 hours in the snow and wind. For mildly sick patients, CCP-style quarantine measures seem to be more dangerous than people being left alone. It's because the quarantine sites don't meet the basic requirements for epidemic prevention. For example, bathroom conditions, ventilation, and air filtration are not up to standard. Poor quarantine conditions and measures have brought more cross-contamination. Prolonged lockdown and quarantine have put people's livelihoods at risk. Jobs are shutting down and businesses are being forced to close. One city reported in February that it had spent 120 million RMB, or 19 million US dollars, on fighting the epidemic since February 13th. A scholar posted on Twitter that the economic loss in Shenzhen during the week of closure amounted to 9.5 billion US dollars, and its achievement was to have identified 643 positive patients, each patient worth 16 million US dollars on average. Naturally, 643 positive patients are only the official numbers. <laughs> I want to live. I have a family to support. Can I just die? Will you just let me die? You have to trust the government for the general public's sake. If you are like this, how can we do our work? What about the laws of the country? Our money is hard earned. It's all hard work. Now you see that the doors are closed, the goods we brought in, boxes of boxes are going to be dumped.
We dumped them all. What should we do? You leaders, who can tell us where we can turn to, who we can go to? Can we, the people, still live? We dump these goods in tears. What are we going to do? For more than two years, the repeated lockdowns have been enough to frighten the Chinese people. When one hears of an infection somewhere, the reaction is to run away and not get caught in the cordon that comes down as fast as lightning. On March 18th, an outbreak occurred in the garment city in Shenyang, northeast China. Thousands of merchants scrambled to escape, and those who fled late were already locked up inside. The scene was chaotic. Quick, run. You can't get out if you're late. It's over. There was no way to know the extent to which the Chinese economy has been hurt by the CCP's harsh COVID-0 policy. The Chinese government just released the January-February economic data of 2022. Its economic indicators have exceeded people's expectations. A Chinese netizen broke the news that since the pandemic, the Statistics Bureau has almost doubled the GDP of all businesses. A friend of mine only had 30 million business turnover, but reported 200 million after being hinted to do so. Under China's red regime, no officials are held responsible for the social standstill, business closures, economic decline, loss of livelihoods, and collateral disasters caused by extreme epidemic prevention and control policies. However, officials could lose their job when they fail to cover up outbreaks. Against this backdrop, the cycle of mass nucleic acid testing, city closures, and quarantines is virtually unstoppable as long as there is an outbreak. Take a look, this is perhaps the longest line of nucleic acid testing in the world. We feel like refugees, like a swarm of ants. Oh my goodness, there's so many people behind us. It's easy to have a stampede. Testing, testing, I've been tested. When did you test? September. It's more than three days. Test within 48 hours is required. September isn't okay. Test within 48 hours. Why do you have to be so stubborn at such times? I'm telling you, the epidemic stuff, can you stop it just because you're scared? Be prepared for it. I'm telling you, it's useless. It's the truth. It's God's will. You have to be scientific to prevent it. If you come in contact with an infected person, you're sure to get the disease. If you don't come in contact with an infected person, how can you get it? You say science. Can it be above the sky? Do you know how many planets there are in the sky? Why are there so many people infected in the U.S.? Why is China so good at prevention and control? It is because the U.S. doesn't do scientific prevention and control so that the infection is so bad. 